Alexander Trusova visited the Akko studio and in an interview with Lina Fedorova spoke about transitions, the methods of Tubbirds and Plushenko, and, of course, remembered the Olympics. She also shared her philosophy of figure skating and victories, and generally showed a new side of herself, thoughtful and judicious. This is noticeable in speech, there is huge progress here, and in intonation, and in the willingness to explain. Wow, Tusova is going into journalism. This is a very new experience for me. I am very pleased and interested. So far we have only recorded some sections, now a podcast, then commentary. They even suggested to me that I would conduct the interview myself. How did Sasha get into Terry Tubbirds' group? Nobody really said anything to me, I came to the screening, and then we talked with my parents. I came to training, they trained me, they gave me tips. And then they said, the next training session is at this time. It wasn't like this. We'll take you, we won't take you, you're on probation. I came, skated for one training session, they looked at me, and that's it. I remember that I flew back from vacation, I had 10 days of complete rest. She flew in and said, I wouldn't go to training there, where I went before, I'll only go to Terry Jujivna. The parents said, good. They came up and asked, can you take a look? And they let me in. I remember that I was very worried that I did nothing at all for 10 days. But I jumped all triples and three threes even taking this into account. When there is some important moment, I probably never go out quietly. The only thing is the Olympics, I don't know why. I was calm. The short was the calmest performance of my entire life. I really wanted to go there. Usually you're worried, there is some doubtful feeling whether you want to go out or not. And at the Olympics, I waited, counting how many minutes until the exit. Even if we take the shore program, the time I was on the ice was not enough. It was a special feeling. And so I was always worried, worried even before the first training session, with top birds. But I knew many athletes who skate there, so I felt comfortable. How friendly was the atmosphere in the group? She was very working in charge. Everyone was always eager to work. In terms of friendliness, I don't even understand what that means. Everyone communicated well, regardless of titles. You often say that there can be no friends in sports. Now you say that everyone treated you super. When did the situation start to change? No. These are two different things. For me, friends are much more than being treated well. For me, a friend is a slightly different person. And these are people with whom I communicate well. I communicate well with everyone, no problems at all. I am ready to help everyone, communicate with everyone. There is no such thing. I will never communicate, we are enemies. This has never happened and it doesn't exist now either. When we are in one place, we can get together, talk, and everything will be good and wonderful. The friend is different for me. We had one dressing room, we started undressing separately a year or two ago. Before the Olympics, we were always in a common locker room. We could always go out, sit down, and everyone would say that she was in pain, how tired she was. We discussed, talked, but friend, I say, this is different. This is a very close person. It is very difficult to find such people, and they spend a very long time on this brink. Friend or not friend. Do you have any figure skating friends? Yes. I currently believe there are two. I think everyone can guess who it is. Therefore, I do not consider it necessary to name them. What was the reason for your transition to Plushenko? I'll answer now. I think that this will be the answer to all my transitions, returns, and so on. I don't consider this a betrayal. I never counted and I don't count now. I have a great relationship with all the coaches I have trained with. I can approach anyone, ask something, ask to talk, and they will help me. And they can also write something at any moment, and I will understand everything perfectly, I will also do everything that is needed. I think this is development. Each coach has his own approach. And an athlete, if he has such a desire, has the right to try, work, in different coaching staffs and decide where he is more comfortable. And in any case, gain experience that the other team did not have. The approach is very different. I'm not saying that in some places it's better and in others it's worse, it's just different. And when you combine two different approaches, it turns out that you have knowledge not from one coaching staff, but from two and you become stronger. Can you tell us how the training process of one group differs from another? 
We can talk for another five days without stopping. They are completely different. I was in three groups, and all were different. In relation to the athlete, on the approach to training, skates, tasks. For Terry Jurjevna, the process is more like a competition. Every day we have a printout that you look at and know your mistakes. Evgeny Viktorovich is more about technique, there are a lot of leading exercises that I have never done. When I started doing it there, he thought that I would never be able to jump anything in my life, because I didn't know how to do these lead-up exercises. He looked at me and always said, How can you do quadruple jumps if you don't know how to do this? That is, these exercises are the first stage of preparation for the quad, and you know how to do the quad, but you don't know how to do this stage. Solana Vladimirovna, Sokolskaya, has a completely different approach to the person, to the athlete. It's also very unusual for me when you can just talk, not just about sports. If at the moment I go out on the ice alone, I will understand perfectly well what I need in order for me to succeed. Which of these methods was closest to you? At least, I jumped five quadruples for both Terry Jurjevna and Evgeny Viktorovich. Yes, I only skated in competitions during the Olympic season. And during training I skated, both when I was with Terry Jurjevna and when I was with Evgeny Viktorovich. Everyone unanimously repeated and, probably, continue to do so, that Trusova is capable of winning only under the leadership of the Terry Tubbirds. Do such words offend you? Do you agree with this? No, they don't hurt. And, in my opinion, in the year when I was with Evgeny Viktorovich, I proved that I could do it on another team. I won the competitions that were at the beginning of the season. Yes, the world championships didn't work out for me at all, but initially, from the short program there, everything didn't go according to plan. But I was very well prepared, I jumped an axle in five quads, and everyone saw it. I think that that year I proved that it was not, not only with top birds. What went wrong in the short program? I really wanted to skate with the axle, but at the last moment we decided to remove it. It really confused me, I made a mistake on the cascade. There was a step out from Lutz, and it was 12th. I'm a person who shouldn't clean up jumps, especially on race day. I was already tuned into that content. During the Olympic season you returned to Tubbirds' headquarters. Why? I can tell a story. During the 6 minute warm up at the world championships, you are little in yourself, there is no such thing that you control where the coach stands. You're determined, you know you need to stretch. You drive one lap, take off your jacket, give it back and start jumping. I've always done this. I turned around, took off my jacket and accidentally drove up to the side where Terry Jurjevna, Sergei Viktorovich and Daniel Markovich were standing. Then she turned around sharply and gave the jacket to Evgeny Viktorovich. I don't know whether it was noticeable to him or them at that moment. But it really happened, I called my mother, and said that I had almost made a very big mistake. They stood in different corners. Did they react to this somehow? Don't know. It was very fast, I didn't have time to think. Apparently, I had so much. That I always gave it to them. This can be connected with a mystical story, were you drawn back? I think no. It happened to me as a child, when I moved from Volkov to Tsariva. When he clapped his hands, I was tempted to drive up. On the contrary, I think it's a habit. Nothing mystical, just a habit of doing what you have always done. I was little there, that's understandable. And then there's the moment when you're stressed, you don't have a little control over what you're doing. You're determined to do something specific, but you don't think about less important moments, such as giving your jacket to the coach. Of course, it's possible partly. Probably, at that time I needed to do this. With what words did they take you back? Yes, there weren't any direct ones. I can say this, it was the first thing. Red hair suits you very well. Then I changed my color. I repainted my hair and then switched. And if we talk about the first words, then here it is. Red hair suits you very well. I can say this, but the rest is personal. But there were no serious conversations. We talked and I went to training. Everything returned approximately as it was. What about your own feelings? When you go out on the ice, do you feel at home? It still felt a little different. But it's more familiar. You go to the same hall, on the same ice, where everything remains the same as it was a year ago. I got used to it very quickly. I probably never had the feeling. I'm at home, I'm not at home. For me it's always work, it's not home. 
And this is no longer a skating rink, but the people with whom you train. Everyone treated me the same way they treated me before. We trained the same way. While you were away, work in Tubbards' group was in full swing. Everyone was preparing Shubikova and Boliva for the Olympics. How did you join this arms race again for coaching attention for the main medal? I probably never fought for the coach's attention. Of course, competition always pushes us to work harder. But especially with the transition, where I had no competition, I realized that it was partly, perhaps, a little more difficult for me. But I could work like that. Knowing that I could do both, it didn't feel like I was fighting for something. No, I did my job, trained, restored everything. And from the first time I came back from vacation, I knew what the content would be, and all the coaches knew. On the very first day I competed in the quadruple lutz. Two days later I was already spinning into the axle. Two weeks later I jumped a quadruple flip. I did my first clean skate with five quadruples at the end of July. And all the coaches clapped for me, sat and clapped. And so I knew exactly how much time I needed to roll in five quads. But the next day I twisted my ankle. And then it was more difficult. Can we say that your best form was during the preparation for the Olympics? No. The best was at the skating and before the skating, and then I twisted my ankle. I didn't immediately damage it too much, three days was enough for me, I didn't ride. But I still wrap my leg and roll around in tape. Maybe this is already in my head, but I didn't even do an MRI. I haven't checked. Because at that time it was important for me to compete at the Olympics, and I decided for myself that everything had healed. And now? Well. I guess, yes. The best form was at the skates. Then I kept jumping. At the Olympics, at least two months worked. I clearly calculated how much I needed. Don't you regret that you did five quadruple jumps at the Olympics? Maybe, if only I could, make the content easier. I don't regret it at all. After I fell from the axle in the shore program, I was also offered to remove the salca in the free program. To which I said, of course not. Firstly, I thought that this was the only chance to win to do five quadruples. For me it looked like this. I have to do five anyway. At the time of the rental, when I did four and was on the fifth, I honestly thought about not jumping. But in the end I decided that I would never forgive myself in my life. To do four and not go to the fifth for me this is almost impossible. What were your thoughts the night after the short in fourth place? Yes, none. I lost short very often, once I was 12th, then 3rd. Placement in the short program has never bothered me. Yes, it's good that when you win, you have a reserve. It's calmer this way. But you can always catch up, I always thought that in the free program you can easily catch up. Moreover, she knew what kind of content I had. How is everything resolved with the team tournament in Beijing? I actually don't know all this. It seems to me that everyone wants to take part in the team tournament. Being on Olympic ice is a special feeling. Therefore, the more, the better. Nobody discussed it with me specifically. We knew this already there. So they told you on the spot. Camila is participating. They didn't even say that. It was somehow matter of fact. Short program, posted. Camila. Well, Camila. Free, posted. Camila. On the day of the free skate in the team tournament, I skated the free skate with 5 quadruples cleanly. What was your bigger goal? Goal to 5 quadruples. I believe that one complements the other. If I jump 5, there will be gold. If I don't jump, it won't happen. I don't think there are two goals. I thought so, so I can't say that there were two of them. I have never had such a goal at the start in my life. I'm going to win. I'm going to do my own thing. I did my part, and then... You quote. I think that first place means winning, all the rest means losing anyway. The second place at the Olympics a loss for you. Yes. Well, what can we say? I won silver. Did I win second place? When you throw darts at balls. There is what you win, and there are incentive prizes. I believe that you win first place, and then there are incentive prizes. So that the second and third do not feel offended, they are also given a medal. How can there be multiple winners? If there are several, then there should be several gold medals. And that's debatable. There is only one winner. Is there any wisdom that Svetlana Sokolovskaya taught you? 
The main thing is to have fun writing. Probably, in my life it was often the case that I skated for something. To achieve goals, to jump this, to skate clean. For pleasure I probably had it rarely. I love figure skating, if anything, I love skating. But pleasure is something else. This is when you enjoy being on the ice. I guess now I'm skating for fun. And then I skated for results. When I went out on the ice, I gave all the energy inside me to people, that's why it's harder for me to skate. Accordingly, it is even physically harder to skate the program. It still is. And other people, on the contrary, collect this energy, and at the start it is easier for them to ride. It's difficult for me to skate shows in a row or two shows a day, because I don't have time to accumulate energy back. I go out, give it away, and then I have to get it somewhere. How do you restore your strength? No way, I'm waiting. Somehow I always get ready anyway. I see people, it spurs me on, I collect them from somewhere deep. What do you want after finishing your sports career? In my opinion, we did not discuss the issue of ending my career, respectively. I don't know, it's not like I had anything planned. I live now and think gradually, not what I want in the future, but what I want today, tomorrow, in a week at most. For the weekend, the three of us with the girls will go to St. Petersburg. I love cars very much and now I can drive mine. What can move you? That's all for now. This was not the case before. I watch films, Titanic it didn't evoke any emotions. And now a video might just come across. I can watch a movie, it doesn't seem to be sad, but at some point there's a lump in my throat. At some moments in life, tears may flow. And I don't understand why that is. What can unsettle you? It's probably nothing now. How do you like to spend your free time alone? The dogs will lie down around me, I'll take my phone and scroll through something. Is there friendship in figure skating? No. When was the last time you cried? Today. I watched the video, I'm telling you. What can cheer you up in any state? My dogs. Family or career? Family, of course. A magnificent wedding or a modest painting in the registry office? Actually, both ways. I want one dress to be painted, then another, then a third. And so lush, if you choose. Roses or peonies? Roses. Melanin or Hanyu? Incomparable people, it's impossible to choose. The same as if you put Nathan Chen in their top three. Completely different. Olympic gold or world record? If now, then Olympic gold. Because I have a lot of records.